Hi, I'm George and welcome to part 29 of the Horizon series. Now we've had a couple of months break, but now we're quite keen to get back into it and finally finish this project. Uh, in this episode, we're going to have a look at the third iteration of the Booster test pressure chamber. And we're gonna have a look at some of the design changes we've made to it and also the tests we did with it. Uh, we wanted to say a big thank you again to everyone who joined us for the live stream when we were doing these tests. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And I also wanted to say a big thank you to John who ran the stream and operated the cameras. He sure had his hands full there. So anyway, let's have a look at the changes and also the tests. So rather than showing all the construction details again, we're just going to have a look at the main differences in this pressure chamber. For full construction details, please see some of the previous episodes. As we saw in part 28, we suspected that the tape holding the carbon fiber down was allowing the pressure to escape through the overlap. So for this pressure chamber, we stopped the tape well short of the overlaps at the ends. Then we laid up the carbon cloth as before and applied peel ply to the top of it. The next day we removed the peel ply and here's the tube after curing and being trimmed. You can see where the tape ends now. The next difference was the metal nozzle insert. On the first test pressure chamber we just glued the nozzle straight into the carbon sleeve. But this time we took special care to prepare the nozzle surface for gluing to give it better adhesion by first cleaning it with acetone and giving it a fresh sand just before gluing. Then we put the nozzle on the mold and wrapped fiberglass toe around the base of it. This was to provide a better seal between the pressure chamber wall and the top of the insert. Here it is after being removed from the mold and sanded. We'll see this in cross section a little later on. Next, in order to make sure the air didn't escape through the end cap walls that have larger separation between the fibers, we added extra layers of fiberglass on the inside. Here we're applying 21 gauze of 85 GSM fiberglass, giving us effectively three internal layers where we previously had just one. We also added an extra couple of coats of epoxy for a nice smooth finish. This is what the inside finish looked like before. And here's what it looks like now. We have also improved the inside seal where the end caps overlap the body tube. Here is a cross section of the body tube and the end cap. The inside of the tube is coated with epoxy. This is what we did on the earlier pressure chamber. As you push the end cap into the tube, a bead of glue forms ahead of the end cap. We would then put this on the rotisserie, which would flatten out that bead more evenly all the way around. The problem was that this didn't necessarily completely provide a nice seal at this point. Here's an example of that earlier internal joint. What we do now is add a bead of glue on the inside of the end cap first, and then we push it into the tube. This is what it looks like in cross section. After the tube is pushed in, we put it on the rotisserie again, and the glue flattens out like this, giving a much better seal. Here is what it looks like now. Finally, in order to stop the carbon sleeves from opening up under pressure near the nozzle and the top of the end cap inserts, we wrap more fiberglass toe around these. So here's the final cross section of the nozzle end. Here is the aluminium nozzle insert. Then we have the fiberglass toe here right at the base. That's then followed by the carbon sleeve. On the inside, we have those three layers of fiberglass. And we also wrap the nozzle in extra fiberglass to give us enough width because the larger outer sleeve cannot shrink all the way down to the nozzle size. And this is where we wrap the outer sleeve again with fiberglass toe to make sure that the outer sleeve doesn't try to expand at this point. So let's have a look at these tests. We performed these tests while we were doing a live stream, so that was an extra bit of a challenge, but also good fun. The pressure tests were carried out in exactly the same way as before. We first filled the pressure chamber full of water and then hooked it up to the launcher with a high pressure hose. We then pressurized it slowly to 1000 psi or around 70 bar. As we passed 900 psi, a small leak developed somewhere around the nozzle. It wasn't entirely clear uh, if it was leaking past the o-rings or somehow getting through the composite structure. The leak wasn't serious and the drip rate was very low. 
We left the pressure chamber pressurized for a full three minutes to see if the pressure chamber would slowly expand and then fail later, like we saw on the previous tests. This time the pressure chamber held up fine and so we depressurized it. On this test we also wrapped a piece of paper around the pressure chamber with one millimeter markings on it and held it down with a couple of rubber bands. This enabled us to see how much the pressure chamber expanded at full pressure. Although it's not very clear in this shot, we can see that the pressure chamber expanded at least a couple of millimetres in circumference. Here we're toggling between no pressure and full pressure and you can clearly see the expansion. This is important to know if we are fitting anything to the outside of the pressure chamber. We then topped off the pressure chamber again with water and set it up for another test. This was again going to be pushing the pressure chamber up to the full pressure so that we could see how it handled pressure cycles. The other view? Okay. Okay, so we are at 400? Yeah. Oh, haven't started the timer 20. yet. 1020, okay, so we're starting the timer. So we're going to hold it there again for three minutes. Um, the chamber again held up well on the second test, and again we had a small drip uh, right around the nozzle. We then repeated the pressure test a third time just to make sure, and again the pressure chamber behaved well. In all three tests we held the pressure there for three minutes. So it looks like fixing the tape issue worked, and the pressure chamber no longer leaks at the end cap joints. So we're really happy with those results. This now allows us to start the construction of the actual airframes, the flight hardware. Now we already have the three inner tubes uh, built for the boosters. So we're just going to add the end caps and wrap it all with a sleeve. Now for the test pressure chamber, uh, these tests aren't finished quite yet. What we're going to do next is we're going to attach a prototype bracket that's actually going to be holding the entire booster down. Um, and we're going to do another pressure test and we want to see what kind of forces will be on the bracket um, under pressure, uh, whether that'll break the pressure chamber or what's going to happen. So that'll be uh, also coming up. So anyway, that's all for this week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. We can hear something here. During the first test, we heard a strange scraping, hissing noise near the pressure chamber and thought that we heard some kind of a leak. It turns out it was this guy. Oh, the noise, there was a, oh, a blue tongue lizard. We had no idea he was there, but obviously he didn't want to be anywhere near the pressure chamber, and so he scurried away.